what's going on people it's ig moto with another umarex gauntlet tweakification in this video we're going to talk about the umarex gauntlets moderator or some people call it suppressor or ldc there's a thousand different names for it but we're going to take a little walk through the basics first so that we can get an understanding of exactly what this uh feature what this part of the gun um actually does and uh what we're going to do is here i'm just going to show it just as a general google search here and if we look for uh suppressor okay it goes back to the end of time uh the beginning of time excuse me when you look at exactly how suppressors were put together and what they do so let's just talk a little bit about what they do as the weapon is fired the gases come through the device like this and these little cones that you see in here are stacked in a way so that what they do is disrupt the airflow so normally the airflow would just come through the rifle like this and go out the barrel all the noise comes out with it well, with a baffle system, what happens is the air gets trapped, the pressures and gases get trapped in each one of these cavities. In every zone, every time it goes into another cavity, it strips a little bit more off. So by the time it gets down here, it's really reduced. And that's really the function of a baffle. I mean, that is what the, uh, the baffle is about. So in this video, what I'm going to do is take the gauntlet baffle system out. We're going to walk through and see exactly how we can improve upon it. Now, speaking of improve upon, I think it's important for me to, to make it absolutely clear. There is nothing that I am doing that hasn't been done before. Cone suppressor or cone stack suppressors have been around forever. I didn't invent them. This isn't something that I came up with. This is just me sharing it with you guys and showing you how I did it and uh, showing you how you can do it. Now, these are powder burner uh, suppressors, but each one uses the same technology um, in champ trying to grab and chamber each, each amount. So what we're going to do in this video, I'm going to show you that in my designing or redesigning, I grabbed a very familiar build. Everyone's familiar with this. This is uh, very similar to the Marauder. Um, and what I did was I took that um, concept, but I designed it in a 3D environment from scratch. I didn't take uh, someone else's design and modify it. This is mine. I made this from scratch. And what I did was produce a stack of five, which have a the bottom edge here, it's hard to see, I mean, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see. You can see that shoulder is tapered at an angle on purpose to coincide with the cone that's coming up. And I'll explain more why I did that a little later. You can see that the stack, if I put that on top, is equal in, in height to the factory unit that comes inside the gauntlet. And this does a far better job of trapping sound, air pressure, and I'm going to demonstrate that and prove it to you. And when I say prove it, um, there's a lot of folks that are very, very cautious and cynical, and you should be, because there's a lot of guys out there selling snake oil, and you need to make sure that you have legitimate claims being made. That being said, what I'm going to do is fire this video up, and we're going to walk through um, exactly how I went about this. And I just want to talk a little bit about the process. Um, when this is up on the screen here, I just want to talk through the cartoon drawing. This is my rendition of the uh, breech block of where the gauntlet's breech block is. That's going to be where the barrel attaches. And then there's the shroud that goes around the barrel itself. There's an air stripper, which is at the end of the barrel. There's a spring that goes against the air stripper. And then there's the baffle, which is like a cigar looking thing that I just showed you a second ago. And this is the cone stack that I made. Now this is a cross section. Uh, the, this is the actual barrel of the uh, rifle itself, which again is in the middle of the, of the shroud. So I'm gonna try my best to stick with green to represent the air that comes out of the gun when you pull the trigger. It travels down the barrel until it gets to the air stripper and we'll talk about that in a second. The projectile goes through the baffle, out the end, and then flies off and does its thing. When it comes out the end of the barrel, 
uh, it has air behind it. And the object of the baffle is for the strippers first, grabs the air and strips it off. And it's on the back side of that O-ring, which forces it down into the space between the shroud and the barrel. So that rips off a lot of sound and pressure. Then as it goes towards the baffle, because it's cone-shaped, it does it again. And it starts to pull the air and trap it in, in the space that's between the spring and the very first cone. Internally to the baffle that the gauntlet has, they're straight walls. They're not angled, they're straight and they come off the sides. Now each chamber that you have there has the ability to grab and lock some pressure and sound in each one. So eventually, as it's going through each one of these chambers, it's going to reduce it. The problem is, is because it's straight walled, a lot of pressure is allowed to come by. So more is coming out the end. The cone design, on the other hand, grabs when it comes out of the stripper. And remember the hole that I said that you put into the bottom of the shroud here. That's so that the gases can get out of the area that's trapped between the barrel and the shroud. And now the, all the gases get to come pull, pull out of there. So they're not trapped in there any longer. The rest of the gases that try to go by the cones are trapped in each chamber. But because the cones are stacked, the air is allowed to go between each cone. Now that's in between the shroud segment. And that also can help find its way back down the shroud barrel and out the bottom. When the gases come out the end now, they're substantially less as the projectile is on its way. So there's less turbulence and there's a better flight characteristic. Here's a set of baffles and I'm going to draw the shroud in larger scale so that it, we can appreciate what's going on because the baffles are relatively close to the shroud. This is exaggerated to help show what's going on. So this is the cone stack here and we're looking at this in, in profile. So it's like we cut the cone in half. So as the air comes in, it gets trapped here can't go anywhere it seeps out the side and now the pressure and air is between the cone and the wall of the shroud it's no longer able to go out the end of the barrel it's trapped in but it's also allowed to seep through the sides because we have a spring at the end the spring will actually let the cones expand from each other so that's how it works and again this is not a new technology this has been around forever so now here's the factory gauntlet baffle. I took it apart so that you can see the small chamber walls that they have. And I'm gonna compare that to what the cone stack would be. Now, when the air goes into the cone stack, they're allowed to come apart because it's under a spring load and because they're separate. So they get to burp, so to speak, into the cavity, stripping off more air. In this part of the video, I'm going to actually turn the volume up so that you can hear the shots. I actually did a sequence here where I took shots. One is the baseline. The baseline is going to be with, and you can see the rifle is fully gassed. It's not you know empty or anything like that. There's no, there's no trickery here. Um, we're going to take three shots with no baffle at all. And I'm going to, and you can do this too, guys, on YouTube. You can pause it. When you see that number get as high as it can go, you'll notice that's the number that I'm, I'm writing down here. So I take two shots. If I said three, that's a mistake. Two shots without any baffles at all. And then I take two shots with the factory baffle in. Okay, so those are the two with nothing in it at all. And you can see the first shot was 99.8 decibels. Second was 98. So the, then the average, we figure the average. Now I speed this part up. You see me putting the factory baffle back in. I put the end cap back on it again. And I get back in position. I take two more shots. Uh, the two shots that I take are with uh, the tape removed from the hole on the back of the shroud. I mean, what tape is over the hole cover that because remember factory doesn't have the hole first shot is 96 second shot is 97 the average of those two shots is 96.55 now we go to the multi stack and you can see the stack there in the foreground that's sitting on it there's lead you can see I've shot through that probably I don't know 200 300 times to make sure that they were good pull the cone out and then put the stack in put the end cap on just like you did before but now I'm taking the tape off to open the hole up. Because remember, the hole is an, an additional breathing method. 
Shot number one. 94.4 decibels. 94.7. That's our average now is 94.55. So through this process, we have a, a good idea of what each shot was um, on, on all of them. And what I did was I took the uh, average shots and put them in a screenshots here so we could see that our baseline, which is going to be with no baffles in the gun at all, are 99.05. That's our baseline. The next round was with the stock baffles in, which the average was 96.55. That's here. Then with the HP baffles in, 94.55. In the calculators we're going to use is to first find the percentages of the values, okay? So the baseline was 99.55. I've done these numbers, so they should be in here. So 99.05. And the first set was 96, which was the factory. 96.55. And we calculate. We end up with 2 point... We're going to put this guy in just so that we have it in our notepad. So that's what we got on the factory setup. Um, the results, if you remember, the average for mine was 94.55. We calculate that. That's 4.64 difference. Okay. We take those two numbers and we go into the other calculator and we can see that the difference between the factory reduction and the HP reduction is a 79% increase in efficiency. So you just saw it. And I, now I know some folks will probably say that uh, the instrument that I used, it was an app on a smartphone, but the conditions all stayed the same. Um, short of having a calibrated piece of equipment and having this thing done by uh, an organization, you know, to have them come in and, you know, make a big production out of it. I think that pretty much puts it together. I think you guys should be able to see that uh, it's 79% more efficient um, with the HP baffles um, in the end. And so that tells us that, you know, this guy right here, this this arrangement of the cones, and that's these here. These, these actually are working very, very well. So that's pretty much it. There's really not much more to talk about on these. I do have these things produced and for sale. Essentially what you're buying is the 3D printing of them. I don't own the design, meaning the original design. These are designed from me, but again, like I told you, this is all existing stuff, guys. Nothing I'm telling you is, uh, is like rocket science. This is all new stuff. But uh, if you've got any questions or if you're interested in these, you just hit me up. And um, I'll have all the information in the description for you and uh, including how you can uh, order a set of five from me if you're interested. That being said, I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time and watching the video. And hit me up on Facebook, Hajimoto Productions on Facebook. If you've got any questions, everything that we're showing here is the photographs are on my page. You can ask questions, details, whatever you want. If there's anything in the video that I didn't say that was clear and you, got, you want clarification, hit me up. I will answer. Um, any of you that follow my videos know that I'm, I'm very good at answering everyone's questions. Um, it just sometimes it takes a little longer than others. So that's pretty much it. I appreciate it, guys. You take it easy. Thanks again for coming by. And always remember, if you uh, like this video, over here on the right-hand side, there's a couple of more that you might like. Take a look at them. Take it easy, guys.